Hello everyone and welcome to this month's Bitwarden Brilliance session. Uh, glad to have you all here. So uh, we are going to be talking today about deploying uh, Bitwarden self-hosted on Azure Kubernetes service. Uh, so my name is Jordan. I am an integration engineer uh, here at Bitwarden. Uh, happy to have you all today and to have uh, my colleagues, Tony, Jake, and Keith here in the chat. Uh, as we go through uh, the session today, if any questions come up, if you have any feedback, uh, please feel free to uh, keep that going in the chat as we're going through the stream. Uh, more than happy to uh, address those today. So uh, for today's agenda, uh, we'll be doing just a brief overview of Bitwarden to uh, level set. Um, we'll be talking about the integration engineering team, so uh, what we do uh, here at Bitwarden for our customers and our community. Uh, we'll be doing a brief level set on uh, self-hosting, in including the uh, uh, Bitwarden unified self-hosted deployment model that uh, we have discussed in the past, and then we'll get into the preview on our uh, upcoming uh, deployment model Bitwarden on Azure Kubernetes service. So with that, a uh, overview of uh, Bitwarden. Um, Bitwarden is a password manager uh, secured with zero knowledge and end-to-end -end encryption. Um, we designed Bitwarden to be easy to use, uh, to synchronize all of your data uh, and allow you to securely share it while uh, we at Bitwarden are transparent both in uh, our actual code, all of our code is open source so that you can be uh, confident in the security uh, that you're providing as well as uh, transparent in our uh, focus on being customer and community centric. So Bitwarden is available wherever you are on a variety of platforms and as we'll be uh, discussing today, there are flexible deployment options for Bitwarden. Um, while Bitwarden is available, uh, of course, as a cloud service, we'll be talking today about the variety of different ways you can self-host uh, your Bitwarden server. So the integration engineering team, um, <laughs> we're also uh, easy to use. Just reach out to bitwarden.com slash contact and uh, we'll be able to help you with uh, any of these kind of more complex deployment uh, options, technical support, best practices in organization design. Um, we're also a customer champion for our product and engineering team. So uh, reaching out to the community like this and working with customers directly, uh, taking feedback like the feedback that uh, people want to deploy self-hosted on Kubernetes so that we can work with uh, other internal teams uh, in order to uh, make that happen. Uh, so the integration engineering team, um, like the rest of Bitwarden, uh, is uh, all remote and we are uh, all over the world. So uh, we are here to help you with uh, implementing integrations like SSO, Skim, and uh, Sim, regardless of where uh, you set up your uh, Bitwarden organization. And then we can provide scripting automation and advanced use case assistance like we'll be looking at today uh, with uh, Terraform and Helm. So self-hosting briefly, uh, the uh, current production model for self-hosting your Bitwarden organization is to use uh, Docker containers orchestrated with Docker Compose, making Bitwarden self-hosted uh, available on Windows Server or Linux host operating systems. And for most environments, we have a very easy to use uh, installation script that will get everything uh, set up for you. The self-hosted installation is also compatible with a manual installation method documented in our help center for advanced deployments, such as in air-gapped environments or where you need more control over uh, how uh, those containers get deployed. All of the Bitwarden self-hosting platforms have um, feature parity with the cloud product and are compatible uh, with all of the Bitwarden clients. A couple of months ago, uh, we released a beta of what we call Bitwarden Unified. This is a simplified Docker deployment where all of the Bitwarden services are running in a single container and you can uh, enable or disable those uh, services via environment variables. So if you have a need for a smaller 
uh, Bitwarden self-hosted environment. Um, as a community open beta, Bitwarden Unified is available uh, for testing today. It also supports uh, flexibility and portability on the database uh, layer, uh, supporting uh, Microsoft SQL Server, MariaDB or MySQL, and PostgreSQL. Um, so this is something that you can go and start testing uh, today, but we don't currently recommend it in production uh, while we make sure that that testing uh, goes well for everyone. Now for today's topic, we are going to be previewing Bitwarden on Azure Kubernetes service. Um, so the integration team, uh, especially uh, Keith, who's here uh, with us today, has uh, worked together to put a Terraform plan and Helm chart together. Um, with the Terraform plan, we'll be creating a new cluster uh, in AKS and then deploying Bitwarden self-hosted as a Kubernetes deployment with the Helm chart. Uh, the Helm chart does uh, support a configurable ingress controller. We'll be using the Nginx controller today. And then it uh, uses Let's Encrypt for Transit Layer Encryption and MSSQL for the database. So after we go through uh, today's demo, if you'd like to uh, try this out on your own infrastructure, uh, please reach out to us, bitwarden.com slash contact. This is a internal project by the integration team and not uh, supported for production deployments. But as we gather feedback from the community and see uh, you know, what tweaks uh, may need to be made, um, we will be uh, moving this forward out of a uh, internal project uh, in the near future. Uh, we'll get into, as we go through the demo, um, some of the specifics on you know why we're targeting AKS specifically, and um, you know what some of our future plans are. But with that said, let's go ahead and hop over to uh, the demo itself. So if we uh, grab our terminal window here, I am in my Terraform um, uh, directory here. So the first thing that we're going to do is initialize uh, the Terraform backend here. And then uh, we, I have already set up my Terraform plan uh, ready to go. So we're just going to run Terraform plan. There are a couple of uh, dependencies here uh, that you'll be familiar with if you've used Terraform and or Helm uh, in the past. So Terraform, Helm, and uh, kubectl or kubectl, <laughs> if you prefer, uh, are required on the system uh, in order to um, run through all of these commands. So as we go through and get the plan set up, uh, the next step is to apply that plan, which is going to create uh, the cluster for us in Azure. So I'm going to wait just a second to make sure that this starts actually applying. And then we're going to pull open uh, the Helm chart and talk about a few things in there while Terraform is doing its good work. This apply step while the cluster is being created uh, takes a, uh, a couple of minutes to complete uh, before we can move on to uh, applying the Helm chart itself. So it's going ahead and creating a bunch of resources in Azure for me and Azure Kubernetes service, of course, is going to then uh, stand up a Kubernetes cluster in those resources. So once I see that, there we go, we've got some stuff being created in Terraform. So while that is going on, let's hop over and talk a bit about the Helm chart. Uh, the Helm chart allows you to uh, customize uh, a number of different um, variables that are required to set up a uh, Bitwarden cluster. So if you've installed Bitwarden self-hosted, um, you'll be familiar with some of these values, things like SMTP so that you can send uh, organization invitations, the domain name, um, and then uh, we've got some configuration for Let's Encrypt and then we're just pulling the containers that we use in uh, the uh, original flavor self-hosted deployment. Uh, but let's talk a bit about why uh, this Helm chart is specific to Azure at the moment. Uh, because a password manager is most useful when it actually saves your passwords, we do have uh, a bunch of volumes that are being uh, defined so that we have persistent storage. 
and in the current design of uh, the Bitwarden multi-container deployment, uh, we have a number of different volumes that are written to by uh, multiple different services. And uh, since Kubernetes is a uh, deployment target that uh, supports a wide variety of different configurations for secrets management, for storage, um, all of this configuration that we're doing in order to stand up uh, the Bitwarden self-hosted instance uh, is fairly specific to Azure in the current version of the Helm chart. Um, since this is a uh, project that we're doing as a preview for you know, how well uh, does Bitwarden function in this kind of deployment environment and how can we optimize it in the future, we are specifically targeting uh, Azure Kubernetes service uh, and a couple of other specific um, deployment things in Kubernetes, like uh, using secrets for various things that you and your own environment may swap out with uh, a variety of other uh, endpoints, uh, especially for uh, the uh, configuration of secrets and uh, how you handle persistent storage. So it's the goal uh, to have a uh, a Helm chart that is as generic as possible that allows you to customize uh, those various drop-ins so that Bitwarden works well in your environment. Um, but what we will have uh, available for preview, uh, again, bitwarden.com slash contact if you'd like to try it out, um, is going to be specific to Azure Kubernetes service. But of course, uh, as a open source company, we very much welcome PR. So um, any uh, changes that you have, any feedback that you have on how this functionality works, uh, please feel free to uh, send that our way. So uh, based on my testing anyway, uh, hopefully the demo gods are going to be smiling on me today, we've still got uh, about a minute, a minute and a half left uh, in waiting for Azure to finish the bootstrapping of the Kubernetes cluster itself before uh, we can move on to setting up things inside that Kubernetes cluster. So as we're waiting for that, if you do have uh, any questions or feedback, we are standing by uh, in the chat, happy to uh, address those. So we will just let this keep scrolling on until it lets us uh, continue with the next step. This bootstrapping uh, may not be necessary in your own environment, this uh, kind of wait time. If you're already using uh, Azure Kubernetes service and you have uh, a cluster ready to go, uh, you'll be flying through the uh, next couple of steps, uh, making sure that all of the Kubernetes resources are applied. So with that, we have a uh, uh, cluster up and running. Um, so the next step is to go ahead and set up an ingress controller. Uh, actually, you know, it would really help if I was in the correct directory. There we go. Uh, so I'm going to move over to the Helm chart and apply. Uh, nope, nope, missed one thing. There we go. See, I had to mention the demo gods, didn't I? I had to skip a step in my script. So uh, we are going to pull down... Uh, the credentials for that Kubernetes cluster so that we can actually uh, apply uh, things to it and go ahead and create an ingress uh, controller so that we can get uh, traffic in. And then the next step is to uh, set up uh, the Let's Encrypt Certificate Manager so that we can get a nice trusted uh, public certificate uh, so that we don't get any warnings when loading up our uh, Bitwarden Web Vault. And now that we've got all of the Let's Encrypt stuff set up, it is time for the fun part using Helm to go ahead and install our chart. Uh, so Helm is going to sit here for just a few seconds while it creates everything according to the chart configuration. And then once that is done, we will uh, watch, the, um, watch the resources spin up in our cluster. 
So it should be just a few more seconds here. Got a bunch of resources being created in Kubernetes. Alrighty. Once the uh, all of these resources from the chart are created, uh, we're going to move on to some DNS configuration. So it should be just a few more seconds here. And if I anticipated enough, it comes, it'll, it'll happen quicker. I'm quite sure of that. That's what they said about watched pots, right? And again, as we are going through and setting all of these uh, pieces up, uh, there we go. Any questions, uh, please drop those in the chat. So uh, this next step that we're running here, uh, I am checking for a public IP address on uh, my ingress controller so that uh, once my ingress is available, I can make a quick change over on my other screen to grab that public IP address and update my DNS. All right. So uh, now that that is done, I'm going to, on a separate screen, because there are secrets involved in this, go ahead and update the Helm chart. I am switching uh, the uh, Let's Encrypt Cert Manager from staging to production. Um, the reason why we do that is so that we don't get banned by the Let's Encrypt API for constantly trying to resolve uh, a certificate that uh, does not have the correct IP address. So I made that change off screen in my values.yaml uh, and I have uh, upgraded the Helm chart to apply uh, that Let's Encrypt uh, production mode. Um, and so we're just going to wait a few seconds while Certificate Manager uh, actually reaches out and grabs and installs that certificate. Um, and then we will uh, go and take a look at our new cluster. So we may see an error message here because uh, Let's Encrypt may not be ready. Yeah, so the certificate authority is invalid. Let's Encrypt is not yet complete uh, with installing the new certificate. So if we give it a refresh, there it goes. Now we've got a uh, secure uh, connection here. So Let's Encrypt has installed its certificate and we are ready uh, to set up our account. So let's just create an account real quick here on this uh, Kubernetes instance. And once that is done, we can log in. Take it just a second longer. I think I probably jumped the gun on the readiness of a few of those containers, but we should be able to log in on this Kubernetes hosted Bitwarden self-hosted environment in just a moment. Not yet. All right, so this is a SMTP error. So if we go ahead and log in, usually an SMTP error. There may be still some readiness issues with some of these uh, pods. Let's see. All right, so let's check on the health of a couple of these pods here. All right, so we've got all of our containers up and running as expected. We're not reboot looping. Let's just try that registration step again in case it wasn't quite ready at the time and it wants to play nicely with me now. Grab this password. Nope, not quite yet. 
All right. So we have the uh, Kubernetes uh, environment set up, but it's not quite wanting to play nicely with uh, the registration process. So let me just see if I can get it to play along for the screen, for the stream, I mean to say. Let's see. Alrighty. Would help if I had access to a bit more troubleshooting in AKS. Let's give it one more try here, and if that does not work, we will move on. There it went. All right, so I uh, just had to give it a couple of tries. The pods were showing as ready, but they were not as ready as they led me to believe, but we were able to get that going. Let's go ahead and apply my license file here. And we now have our uh, organization license here applied. We are ready to uh, use our uh, Kubernetes hosted, uh, self-hosted instance. So uh, with that, that brings us to the end of our demo for today. Uh, like we have uh, been discussing, this is a uh, preview of deploying uh, Bitwarden on yet another uh, type of deployment model for uh, self-hosting. And if you are uh, interested in testing this out in your own environment, or if you want to take a look uh, at uh, how we've put together the Helm chart and uh, see if you can modify it for your own environment, or if you have any other questions, uh, or just want to get in touch, please feel free to uh, reach out. Bitwarden.com slash contact is the place to go. Um, so a question from chat, uh, is the unified self-hosted deployment still in beta? Uh, currently, yes. Um, so we are actively making uh, quite a lot of changes to uh, unified, fixing uh, you know, a couple of bugs uh, that have come up uh, in testing uh, from the community, but uh, we will be making an announcement once uh, the unified self-hosted deployment uh, is ready to go in production, as well as when we have uh, production ready for this demo, uh, the, uh, the Kubernetes deployment. Um, but with that, uh, I think I will go ahead and get us some uh, playoff music going, run through uh, our end slides, but we'll stick around for a few minutes. If there are any other questions, uh, please uh, let us know. Otherwise, uh, happy May 4th and uh, have a good Thursday. Thanks, folks. <laughs>